Good evening everyone. I welcome all of you to yet another lecture of simulation of business systems course. And uh, previously we have seen quite a lot of uh, new topics. We have seen the definition of simulation, the importance of simulation, the type of simulations, the consideration when do we use simulation, those kind of aspects. Then we looked into the history of the simulation, how this tool came up as one of the most popular operation research tool and how to study complex systems or systems using simulation. And we also talked about uh, some of the new techniques of simulation like uh, these uh, with the multiple models, then Monte Carlo simulation, etc. We worked a small example of a bank with uh, hand and see how the simulation is working when customers are coming to a bank. And we also worked a small model on Monte Carlo simulation on how to do Monte Carlo simulation. We also saw how we can do use Excel, Microsoft Excel to do Monte Carlo simulation and how when you do large number of replications of the simulations, the output starts converging to a real value that kind of a thing. Okay. So, with this today what we are now going to do is we are now going to study the new topics on how to build simulations. When you are building a simulation what are the major aspects and under this topic the major topics that we will be discussing as part of this particular section is what do you mean by a modeler's viewpoint? How does a modeler, how a modeler look towards simulation? Or what we are more interested in it is how would uh, the approach followed by the modeler towards simulation results in the uh, results in building the right simulation? Then the second part is the key issues of simulation, what all we need to consider, need to consider while building the simulation, building a simulation. Okay. So, that aspect is also taken care of here. Then what are the user needs? Okay why do the user need simulation simulation what are the user needs okay what are the user needs we can satisfy using the simulation and then when to use simulation circumstances suitable for simulation when do we use it okay that aspect. Then we talk about, so these things to a large extent will tell us, you know, the uh, provide guidelines, guidelines on when to use the simulation kind of a thing. Then we talk about entities, attributes, event activity, then steps in the simulation, these aspects will be the second part of the lecture. So, let us start with the first and most important aspect of it is what we call as the modeler's viewpoint okay. and or what should the what. So, here what we are talking about what all aspects the modeler should consider, should consider while building a simulation. Okay. So, that is the that is the main aspect that we are going to discuss here okay. and so what are the main aspects, what all aspects the modeler should consider when he or she is building the simulation. So, the first and foremost thing is the main key issue is how to do it quickly, okay. or here the major consideration is speed. The sub questions under this category is how to build the model quickly, quickly, then it is 
how to experiment with the model quickly. Okay. Then another one that you can talk about is how to interpret the simulation results quickly. So, all of these things they all focus on as we said is speed because time equals or equivalent to money. More the time you spend in doing this more the money that you will be end up spending on running the simulation. So, here what you are trying to do is you are trying to do it at a quicker pace or a faster pace. Okay. So, do it quickly so that expenses to build simulation simulation can be reduced. Okay. So, this is the major consideration in how to do it quickly or we are considering here is the speed. Now, once the speed aspect is taken care of then the next question obviously is how to build the right model. We will use the word right model. So, the aspect here we are going to try is we are going to think about graphics, we are to going to think about uh, virtual reality T, then simulation etcetera all of these things you might want to combine. So, that the model that is right, right for the problem is built. This implies that model captures what is necessary. So, what we are doing is we combine graphics, we combine virtual reality, we combine simulation all of this okay, so that we can build a model that is right for the problem at hand or whatever the problem that you are trying to simulate or whatever be the simulation problem then you want to build a model that is right to it and it ensures that the model captures what is necessary from the system. So, that is building the right model. So, this means uh, right model for the specific problem. This is what we need to think important here is the right model for the specific problem whatever be the specific problem we are interested in building the right model for it or the model that is appropriate. Okay. It is the appropriateness of the model that we are talking about appropriateness. Okay. All right. Then the third major consideration that we have here is how to know about the correctness of the model. Okay. This is more into what we are basically talking about is how do we verify Okay. How can one verify verify whether the model is correct or model is right? How can one do that? What are the ways you can do this? Okay. So, this concept of verification it is basically like kind of in a way certificate certi certification that the model does what 
it is supposed to do supposed to do or supposed to do okay so what we are interested here is we are interested in to find out certify or assure people that the model is doing what it is supposed to do okay and how do we certify that how is this approval or how does this tell people that yes this is the model that is supposed to be built and it does what it is supposed to do okay now the fourth consideration out of this is how to interpret spread the output correctly correctly so here means you have a system then you say abstract to a model to study the system okay so you have a system then you abstract to a model to study the system use the model to conduct experiments this implies data collection and from there you have is the interpret data or results okay so you have a system a complex thing okay this is complex from here you abstract into a simulation model to a simulation model simulation model so you abstract to a simulation model so that you can study the system so this is lesser complex okay uh, only necessary features necessary features only whatever is necessary to be studied is abstracted to a model using the model you conduct experiments experiments is where you basically the model giving the output or here is the expected behavior of the system behavior of the system and from here once you collect use this experimentation it generates data and when the data is collected and then how do you interpret the data okay when you put a graph or something like this then what does this graph mean okay and how do you interpret this graph and so that the conclusions that are made out of this data so this results in what we call as valid conclusions how can you do that using this approach so that is the interpretation of the output correctly so here the importance is valid conclusions or you can say it as rational insights that's also one other way to say this okay then a fifth problem that is of done quite lately by people is people think about how to reuse the simulation or at least components of simulation the question here is how do we reuse the simulation or at least the components of the simulation is the major aspect of this okay so there are multiple ways you can think about it but the most important part of it is why do you want to reuse the simulation because of the first thing okay time to build or time to build the simulations are very very high you need to spend a lot of time to build simulations so if you spend a lot of time building simulations then if you once build a simulation you are more interested in reusing it because more you reuse it then you can actually reduce the time to build the next simulation model and if you can reuse it then your problem of solving this actually becomes much more easy so from a modeler's view point these five are the major key issues when it comes to building a simulation now with that let us see how do we do what are the focal points major focal points okay what are the focal points on how do we build a simulation so these are the major considerations that we told earlier now what are the focal points okay as a modeler so here is as a modeler 
the following things things should be should be paid attention to okay what are the major things number 1 is focus on how the internal works how the internals internal work okay internals of what so the the aspect here is devil is in the details it is kind of a adage that people use okay that means details of system details of model details of assumption assumption details of experiments etc so what we are saying here is that you should focus on the internals how the details how the different details of the system how is the simulation model the internal aspects of it how does each sub module each aspects of the simulation is working that is the first part that we are for the focal point need to be of the modeler the second part is the focus on the simulation programming languages so because as i said earlier this is an important focus because simulation studies are expensive why takes lot of time lot of time to do modeling and experimentation if you take a lot of time to model an experiment then what happens this results in large cost okay so simulation studies are never cheap so then the way to so how do we reduce the cost then how do we reduce cost okay the first way to do it would be use the right tool to solve the problem for studying a simple facility like a bank or something to do you would rather not build a custom built simulation stuff you would rather use a uh, readily available simulation package but let's say you are trying to study the la uh, the launch of a nuclear bomb or something then you would probably end up building a custom model so how do you use which how can we use the right tool if you have the right tool to solve the problem then that will result in reducing the cost okay second one is make new mistakes do not repeat old ones okay when you are building a simulation language simulation model because the system is complex okay the mistakes will be mistakes due to complexity okay so if you make a mistake then fine that's all right correct the mistake correct it and do not make it again many a times you will keep on you will if you know that how much of time we spend on solving the repeated old mistakes it it's crazy that and this trans, this will also also reduce the cost okay so you use the right tool and to solve the problem and then if you want to make if you are making mistakes make new mistakes never repeat the old mistakes if you do these these two will reduce help in reducing the cost now the third focal point for the modeler in this regard is focus on the speed okay 
and the mantra here is that time is money and hence reduce time reduce the time needed to build the model reduce the time need to do the experimentation reduce the time taken to interpret the results all these are part of the uh, focus on the speed aspect so the question here is how how do we do this the two ways you can do this number one is build the simulation models fast so first thing is you do is you focus on building the simulation models quickly fastly okay if you can build this fast then reduce the modeling time that's what you're trying to do you're trying to reduce the modeling time second part is build fast models okay or what we call as what we call as efficient implementation so we are looking at you are focusing on building the simulation models fast and then you are trying to build fast models okay fast simulation models or you are looking at the efficient implementation of the simulation here reduce the uh, analysis time analysis and experimentation time that is what we are focusing in this for particular aspect of how to build the simulation model so these three focal points focus on the in how the internal works focus on which the programming which tool to use okay the tool aspect of it and focus on the speed these three focus point will actually help should be paid attention to by the modeler to realize very good simulation study okay with that now we will get into what we call as the key issues in simulation and as i said earlier with the focal points and some of the aspects are important and there are so here what we say is we will focus on focus on major questions that are to be answered to be answered under each category that is what we are trying to do so the first thing as i said earlier is build the right model that is the first focal point you know and the major questions that need to be answered in this point will be what to include what to include as part of the right model okay so what do you want to include what are to be included as part of the right model in a better way to think about it is and then what are to be included and how much in detail if you want to include something fine go ahead and include but then how much in detail you need to include this okay because as i said more details implies result in more time okay implies more cost okay so if you keep on including the more details yes it will take you more time and the time will translate to a bigger cost okay the decisions here the decisions here impact or influence okay or affect affect the validity the validity of the simulation model the speed of the simulation model then the development time and cost okay etc so all these aspects the validity of the model so if you don't include sufficient details then the model become invalid if you include too much of detail then the model might become valid but then it will reduce the speed of the model with which you can do experiment and the it will also re reduce the speed on the development time 
and once the development time increases or goes through the roof, then the cost will also go through the roof and then the cost of the simulation become quite expensive. Second one is obtain good performance, okay. this is the second aspect of it, obtain a good performance. Okay. So, which means the output of the simulation model, model should be usable, okay. that is one part. Then the model should not require too much of time nor too big of a hardware to execute. So, you should not require too much of time to do the experimentation with the model, nor you should not require a too expensive of a hardware to execute the model. So, it should be a balanced performance. So, good performance, or you can th think about it as a balanced performance. Okay. That is what you are more interested in this aspect, obtain a good performance on the model. Then the third aspect is you know know whether to believe the output or the question here is how do you know you can believe the output how do you know whether you can believe the output how can you figure out whether you can believe the output or not okay so the major things to focus here on are bad model or bad data or wrong assumptions. Okay. So, these are the major aspects bad model or bad data or wrong assumptions is one aspect that you need to focus. Okay. If they are not there, then the trustability increases and this is true for other other things as well okay then bad choice of software for model development so if you did not make the right choice of the software for model development then it will also help you in increasing the trustability of the model. Then the third part is incorrect statistical analysis. So, uh, <clears throat> if you use the wrong statistical tool to analyze the data, then you know this will result in what we call as GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. If you use the garbage tool and the garbage wrong data to analyze the uh, data uh, analyze the data of the simulation experiment, then you will get the garbage output or the incorrect result will come to you. Okay. Then what happens is the last one is wrong interpretation of the output of the output. So, like say let us say if you see a scenario for example, many of the time people study simulation the, the system behavior or the simulation kind of looks like this. If you look at the system behavior, it looks like this sometimes. It, the system behaviors behaves typically like this. So, let us say this is the output of the system. Okay. And up to this point, you can see that we performance of the system this much period, okay, this time period and the system performance is system is not stable and here is the system is stable okay, or steady state. Okay. So, if you take a small enough time window, okay, small enough time aspect where the system has not reached a steady state, then you will never be able to do the steady state analysis. So, such kind of a, so this behavior of a system is called as transient. Okay. 
So, you have to ensure make provisions for ensuring that the transient you are not analyzing just the transient to make about the steady state of the system. So, you are not interpreting the result in the wrong fashion. Okay. Now, once this is done the next question obviously is how do you get others to believe the output? How do you get others to believe the output of the simulation? How do you make others believe that yes this output coming from the simulation model is you know believable and many a times use animations okay, to show the flow, to show the flow within the system. But then animations means bigger and expensive system hardware. So, you can make fancy animations to increase the believability of the system or make others to believe the system, but then once you use animations when you have fancy animations then you have bigger and expensive hardware is also required to run the same animations. So, in a way having that animations will might increase the believability of your model with others, but that does not necessarily mean that uh, it is not it is not it, it will also increase the cost of your uh, simulation study. So, the advantages and disadvantages of using the animation must be strictly uh, looked into. Okay. Now, we look into again you know uh, once again we will look into the definitions of what is a simulation and given in the light of this key aspects of simulation let us look into with these definitions once again and here I will focus more on the practitioners definition. We use, so the practitioners definition says simulation is the use of models, use of models to replicate or mimic, okay. replicate or mimic the behavior of real system or we will call it as actual system. Okay. So, that is in a way we are, we are trying to do as a practitioners definition here this class is we use models to replicate or mimic, okay. replicate or mimic in a sense that we are basically trying to answer the question of you know how do the system behaves, the how do the actual system behaves and it is very expensive to study the behavior of the actual system with the help of the actual system. So, instead you use a model to replicate or mimic that behavior of the system okay. because studying with real system is almost impossible. or cost prohibitive or something like that. This in itself studying with the actual system the real system is an almost of an impossible task and hence because of that reason you actually use models to mimic or replicate the behavior of the actual system. And the obviously the problem is that the models can have very different objectives. Okay. So, the major objectives you can think into multiple things. Okay. So, the first set of objectives we can think about it as the scientific experimentation. the first objective is scientific experimentation. What does this mean? Okay. This implies understand behavior or behaviors, behaviors of the existing system. What we are focusing here is we are focusing to understand the behaviors of the existing system. Okay. That is one aspect of the scientific experimentation. An example of this is example how DNA works. You may not be able to understand the behavior of the DNA uh, because it is very hard to really take the DNA out and put it in a room and then see how it behaves. So, you might want to build a model of that a particular model and do the scientific experimentation of that right. Then another example of is second example would be how will GST goods and service tax GST of India 
will help the economy after 10 years. So, this question how the goods and service tax of India will help the economy after 10 years, you can actually study this by the real system, but it requires you waiting for 10 more long years which you do not have. If you want to find out what is it going to be the impact on the economy after 10 years, you have to build no other option, but to build a simulation model, uh, put the values into it, try to mimic the behavior of the Indian economy and introduce the, sim the GST into it and uh, run the simulation for a duration of 10 years and look at the result and then from the result make the conclusion. So, this is the scientific experimentation where you are more focused on understanding the behaviors of the existing system. The second objective that we can talk about it is designing a new system, design a new system. Okay. So, in this case uh, you, the system does not exist, the main, most important thing is system does not exist. So, you cannot really play with an existing system because it actually does not exist. So, here the idea is that optimize a new system and also evaluate alternatives. Okay. So, for example, in this case is you know uh, Airbus A380, okay. they had at least three designs, okay. design 1, 2 and 3 and then they simulated this, used the simulation to decide which is the better design. They were trying to optimize the design in this regard, okay. optimizing a new system. Okay. Second part is find surprises or design flaws. When you are designing a new system, there will be something that you might not have considered, there might be something that would not that have escaped the thought process of the designer or the design process. Those are called design flaws, these are the things that escaped the designer's consideration. Okay. So, in this case these things had escaped the consideration of the designer and hence those translates to what we call as design flaws and or the surprises which will prevent the system from doing the expected behavior of the system. Then the third one is enhance understanding of the system. Okay. So, here it is called as no more, you want to know more about the system, you want to understand much more about what is the system. So, so here the system exists, but you want to know more details to it. Okay. So, it is to know more details of the system. For something you might be interested in improving the system, mostly for improving the system. Okay. That is the major consideration here. Then the fourth part is the fourth objective that many people think about it is which is also a develop skills okay. or this can be one is modeling skills, other one is uh, specialized skills. So, an example of it is example land uh, 747 of which is what we call as jumbo with three engines failed. So, nobody in the same mind will actually take a jumbo jet a Boeing 747 fly up in the sky destroy three engines and try to land with only one engine, it is suicidal. 
So, what people will try to do is you can actually create a simulation environment in which you a pilot can actually fly a virtual aircraft, take it up to a particular altitude and switch off the three engines, simulate the scenario of three engine failure and see whether the person can land with a single engine. And in that process the pilot will learn what are the major aspects, what are the major considerations, how much should be the flaps be, whether you should deploy the landing gear, if should be deployed the landing gear, when it should be landing, when it should be deployed, should the slabs be deployed, okay. what is the RPM at which the engine needs should be running, all these aspects are considered. So, this results in building the specialized skills for a pilot in handling emergency. Okay. So, this case is this case uh, not this, the specialized skill in this example is handling emergency emergencies. Okay. So, that is also considered as one aspect. So, development of skills uh, in a very tough situations or costly tricky situations is also one other objective of using the models to study a system. Okay. So, then the next part that we want to get, get into is what we call as the what if questions and simulation. Okay. Uh, what if analysis? Okay. What we are trying to say here is that the simulation always looks into uh, what if analysis. Okay. Uh, what if analysis is what in a better way the word to use this is alternative or alternate, alternative or alternate analysis. What are the alternatives that are available for the uh, current system? So, to do that the simplest and easiest way to do it is to build a simulation model and so then alternative analysis then you can say build a simulation model. models and then analyze. Okay. So, this is one good aspect of simulation. So, what are the some of the examples? Okay. Let us talk about it quickly. So, it will give you an idea what it will be. Okay. The effect of earthquake on a 100 story building. What will happen if an earthquake happens on a 100 story building? So, you can take the richer scale of let us say you can say it is earthquake is on a 4 scale, 4.5 scale, 5 scale, 5.5 scale like this. What will happen? The multiple earthquakes comes into picture or the earthquake of different magnitude comes into picture and how do the 100 story building will behave to this? So, that is an example of alternate uh, or what if question, what happen if this earthquake comes into picture. Okay. Uh, what happen if a tall building is hit by a jet. Okay. So, like for example, what happened in World Trade Center, what happen if a big building is hit by the jet, what will, what will be the outcome of it. Then another example is how would uh, traffic congestion impact emergency vehicles. So, if there is a huge traffic congestion, how would it impact the movement of the emergency vehicles? Okay. What happened? if all higher denominations of currency are eliminated, uh, higher denominations eliminated above rupees 100. What would happen if all higher denominations of currencies eliminated above rupees 100. Uh, what would be the, what will happen to that? So, for example of this is, if you eliminate all the uh, currency above 100, then the, if you have 1 lakh rupees. So, in, uh, in the case of 2000 nodes, how many do you require? Okay. If you have what, how much, how much if you have 
uh, 50 knots, 50 200 knot, uh, 10 200 knots will be 20,000, 50 of them. Okay. So, if you have a 1000 knots, so how many it would be? 100 knots. If you have only 100 rupee knots, then how many? You will end up having 1000 of them. Okay. So, this will be 10 bundle. So, it will result in hoarding of black money difficult, but it will also result in making more ATM machines because the number of currencies that can be dispensed by an ATM machine will be less. So, you require more ATM machines for people to uh, for for to dispense that much amount of money. Okay. So, similarly there are many questions you know how does global warming influence the migration of birds. What happened if the temperature of the globe increased by 2, 2 degrees Celsius? How would it influence the migration of the birds? These kind of things, these kind of what if questions can be quite well analyzed by uh, using a simulation. Okay. With this, we get into what we call as the different needs, different user needs and different users of different needs, you know, and how do we manage these different user needs and that aspects of the simulation. So, the first point is certain users of complex, they require a complex and messy system description. Okay. So, here the most important thing is realism with actual system is important. You want the system to be as realistic as possible with that of the actual system, okay. heavily used in heavily used in military training, okay. uh, aviation sector. So, the simulations that are used in military and aviation sector are quite complex and messy system descriptions, because you want to have it as close to as reality as possible. So, these are typically what we call as the expensive models. Okay. More realistic the model is more expensive it actually becomes. Okay. Sometimes other users they do require simplified abstract models. Okay. Here the focus is on is on enhancing the understanding of the user. Okay. That is the first thing, if the user is focused on enhancing the understanding of the system, okay. then too much of details inhibit, inhibit the understanding of the user. If you put too much of details into the system, it will inhibit the understanding of the user. Then sometimes performance is critical or is crucial, sometimes not. So, if you want to do a large experiment, okay, large experiment. then the performance is crucial, because if the model is not fast, then your experimentation will take a long time. Sometimes you only do single experiment, only once you will do the experiment and that is it. In those case, you might not require the model to run that quickly, it can take a little bit of time, because you are only doing it for once. So, correctness, okay. sometimes correctness is crucial. sometimes not. 
like for example, is that you want to probably estimate the so in the case of a hospital or healthcare business, the correctness is quite crucial, where you are talking about uh, dumping of a food waste or landfill, you might not be interested in that much of a correctness as that in the case of a healthcare uh, simulation model. Okay. So, depending upon the model that you are doing, you, you might want a high, highly correct model or you might not want a highly correct model. And the last part is the usage. Okay. So, some simulations some simulations run only once, whereas some simulations are used quite frequently. Okay. So, some of them are only used once and some of them are used quite frequently. So, depending upon the usage also you will end up a different. So, the different type of users, the type of user varies the same way are the needs of the simulation also varies in this regard. So, then obviously, the question is you know when to use the simulation or what is the appropriate time to use the simulation. Okay. So, the major time that you will use the simulation includes these are the major points that you should remember when the system of interest, it is all about the system that you are interested in studying, when the system of interest number 1 does not exist. Okay. So, if the system does not exist, then simulation is used to design the system. So, if the system does not exist, then you cannot study using the real system. So, you use simulation mostly to design the new system. Okay. Second one is when the system of interest is too expensive to use for simple okay, or we call it as mere studies. Let us say you want to find out what is the average Q length in a factory, a factory is an expensive system and you do not want, you do not want such a too expensive system to use for two simple studies. If that is the case, then we use simulation. Number 3, the, when the system of interest is too dangerous to study directly. So, you want to find out what is the impact of dropping of an atom bomb in a big city, uh, it is pretty dangerous to actually take the atom bomb and drop it in the big city. Instead what you would do is you build a simulation model of the city and you build a model of the atom bomb and drop it and then try to study it using uh, different propagation shock waves and other things and try to figure out how it actually happens. Okay. Then the fourth part is, is the system of interest is too slow. Okay what is the impact of the GST on the country in 10 years or something like that. Okay. The system takes 10 years to do it, you cannot do anything about it. So, when the system is too slow, what you want to do is you want to take a quick look, a quick look uh, at various alternatives alternatives to see which ones to pursue in detail. If the system is too big and it is too slow, you want to look at some alternatives and to see which one to pursue in detail that is when you use simulation. Okay. Okay. Also, it is like long periods of study in months or years. Okay. If your time period is too long to study, then it is also important to uh, use a 
simulation so you can you can speed up the time artificially speed up the time okay then the fifth consideration is is when the system of interest is too fast if it is running too fast then what it down then slow it down so that you can see uh, what is going on okay so that is the last aspect if the system is too fast you want to actually find a way to slow it down so that you can actually see what is going on within the internals of the system okay so what we will do now is uh, we will stop here today and uh, what we our main aim would be to take the rest of the terms in the next uh, ne rest of the parts in the next presentation and we will go in detail from there thank you for your patient listening and also please ensure that you go through the notes and as well as the assigned reading we will see you soon thank you very much